one of the friends I made on that performing arts course uh, was uh, a chap called Wayne Davis. And he wasn't a musician, um, whereas most of the people on that course were musicians or some were actors or dancers. Um, but he, he was more into the film side of things and that fascinated me. Uh, we spent a lot of time with each other and um, I was exposed via him to a lot of films I'd never seen before. And it, it, it opened my mind to a lot of possibilities, um, things like camera work, production, lighting, sound, um, visuals suddenly had a different meaning. After the internet um, went rocketed with social networking sites like uh, MySpace, um, it brought so many people together. And it was, yeah, some people still use MySpace, but it, it's just not what it was. And unfortunately, that's the world we live in. MySpace, when it first started, it was run by nerds. People that went on it were nerds. If they're dead honest, because before that point, um, not many people got into computers much. Not many people had a smartphone or an iPad. The idea of having something like that, because what you think, oh, it's some kind of Star Trek Next Generation fan or something, you know, and, um, and yet, if fans are really honest, the people that set up the MySpace, they, they knew a little bit about coding, HTML, and um, they made themselves a fancy site. And what they did is they, they started talking to not just um, bands and musicians and fans from their own country, they started talking and networking with people in other countries. And I found um, one of the problems with that was the imagery. Um, what they saw was all they associated you with. Yeah, if you if you try and explain to someone um, on your street what you do, uh, you can face to face. You can tell them anything you want um, in a magazine uh, or a newspaper. That media, you see a photograph sometimes, and I write about it. Uh, but because of the internet, um, it meant that um, you could obviously stream imagery and visual visual um, related stuff like logos um, but also video and I'd grown up with um, pre MTV generation you know when MTV got big I'd been watching music videos that were experimenting in the 80s that were experimenting in the 80s with you know I imagine when you look back some of the ghastly some of the horrible videos the music videos that were made by people but there were some great films. I was always a big film fan. I love my movies, especially John Carpenter. But one of the reasons is because the, the music, uh, 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 John Carpenter is a, is a great at writing music for his films and that's what some of the, the imagery uh, in my music videos is very inspired by a lot of the films I grew up with. Um, Assault on Precinct 13 um, is such, um, it was so way ahead. I, I mean the original version. Um, uh, it was so groundbreaking. It, it taught me a lot about imagery and uh, dynamics, production. Um, so w w what happened, uh, I, I started um, working with a few friends from college and um, we tried making a music video and it, you know, it, it, it worked and we, we had one and um, there you go, that's a music video. And we, we spent some time on it and it was more like a mini film. And, um, and, then, and then you start going, well, what else can we do? And um, it was a couple of years later and uh, I had some odds and ends in the house and I thought I could convert this cellar to look like this and it'd be good for a photo shoot. And we set things up and it's costume, props. Um, this is um, the set. It's not a basement anymore. It's, it's a film set now, and then if you want to get the right people involved, you've got to talk to them. So I had to spend a lot of time um, uh, looking at um, directors, uh, filmmakers, and um, I, I don't have a video camera myself. I might get one soon. I always I'll get around to it, but I never seem to get one. Um, I, I don't think I, I probably enjoy it as much, but I like the idea of someone having the freedom as well. You, you, you set up a structure for them, you set up a, a basic storyboard, uh, a plan, you get all the costumes, you get the extras, but at the same time, um, I like to give everyone in a production 
a little bit of freedom because there's the chaos element where there's everything you know it's going to be there but extra elements is provided by people putting their interpretation of what you've done. Um, director Chris Stone and producer Craig Leonard and uh, it was just a, a conversation um, on a coffee table um, in, in a coffee shop about making a music video saying well, well why? Uh, I wanted to do that because uh, a friend of mine who was a week for Infan uh, passed away um, and when Chris passed away you know, I, was, I felt pretty sad and um, he was very young and very talented and he was into um, reenactments and he used to be on Seven Valley Railway and they used to do the 40s weekend and uh, he used to dress up and he, you know, had some stunning photographs and he thought that kid's got his whole life ahead of him and he died and I felt really bad and I wanted to kind of um, kind of salute him yeah so we made the music video um, but I, I say we um, I, I spoke to um, a producer who wanted to produce a, a music video for us and uh, he knew a lot about props um, still does costumes and um, resources and um, I spoke to him about this and he wanted to move it forward he got a director called um, uh, Chris Stone who was very into his um, uh, movies and filmmaking and they just that was a different kind of project. That was a lot of that was out of my control. Um, it wasn't something I'd. Um, I can't take credit for all that. You know, I can take credit for a few bits that I did. Some of my acting, it was real. I did my own stunts. Yeah, but my, some. I, 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 when it comes to the music videos that I've produced, um, there's a different story for each one. Um, I, I try and make sure that they. they there's, a, there's, there's always a continuous story. It is, I'm a bit of a romantic, there's a kind of love story that goes throughout my music videos, it's a secret thing. Uh, Hitchcock, when he uh, makes his films, he puts little clues and stuff. Um, and there's a, there's, we've got ten music videos now, uh, at the point of this uh, interview. Um, but uh, each one has got, uh, I say subliminal, but there's little, all, all filmmakers or people involved in films, usually you put something in there but there's, there's little things which you, you're giving viewers a snippet of your life the lyrics do that in songs and um, when you can tie imagery with lyrics and stuff you can play games and you can go what, what, what do I want to do with this um, I, I, I um, recently did a music video I, I, I got extras down there and I invited the extras I knew who the extras would be I gave them a little freedom uh, to dress in certain ways, but again a rough theme. Uh, the set was worked out. Uh, the lighting was pretty much worked out, but we had a lot more thanks to the um, uh, filmmaker. Uh, there's 57 studios. They, they they came down recently, and uh, but what I didn't tell them is what we were all going to do in that room, and I, I think that worried them at first. And um, there, it was kind of like, well, you've got the set, you've got you've got all the people there. Um, but you haven't told us what we're going to do. And then when they got there, everyone was confused until I told uh, the director exactly what they were going to do. And then it made sense why I hadn't storyboarded it. Uh, well, I had storyboarded some things. I, I, I'd done sketches and diagrams of camera angles, best places to stand. But I don't think they could work out how we were going to make a music video. And uh, when they realised that the reason why I'd done this is because there's, there's, there was an element of um, the unknown. Because it would be totally impossible to um, storyboard what these 30 people um, would do because part of it was an experiment to see what they would do. Sometimes I wanted people to freeze, sometimes I wanted them to sort of run around and have fun, uh, pull expression of the face. It was very performance based and I was also trying to make it fun for the people there. So when they turned up, uh, I took them seriously um, as, as if I'd take serious any actors on the set and I'd treat them like. Um, I mean, some actually had done acting. We, we, we actually had some models there. Um, uh, all sorts of different backgrounds, different age groups. And I didn't want to sort of um, treat anyone like they were superior or inferior. I treated everyone as exactly the same because this is what we're all going to do. It's a team effort. We can't do this without you. And yeah, we've set this up. So it's uh, be involved. Thank you for this. And we'll have some fun. And I'll try and make it fun. And. Uh, the one music video I'd um, I hadn't told anyone about this mini boxing ring. 
which I had outside, well, next to the gig. I didn't tell anyone for an hour. I, le I left people asking questions. But the four makes it fun. What is that? <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Yeah. And then we staged a kind of mock fights, like, you know, because I was a big wrestling fan and stuff, you know, WWE, and the whole Hulk Hogan, you know, uh, male, whatever you want to call it, like, you know, show voting, you know, I just thought it was hilarious. And I wanted to do a slapstick version of that. Because, um, but the lighting, I uh, had to be sorry that for that. Um, I had to do some sketches. We had two camera people. And I gave them a free bit of freedom. Uh, the, the Kilverts, as Martin and Daniel Kilvert were the camera people for that. And uh, if you've got the set worked out, and you've got the extras worked out, and you've given the camera people room um, to do what they can do, you have got a lot of the, the basics for a music video, I think. Um, I think if it's too structured, it looks structured. If you're going to tell a story, it's got to be explanatory. It's got to be... Um, Something that, say, someone um, that doesn't speak your language can identify with. And we go on to promoting. Promoting? Um, first of all, a lot of promoters uh, out there um, trying to help bands. And it's great. Uh, if you're going to help um, a band, uh, that's very noble of you. Some bands uh, don't do anything to help themselves. Uh, they don't even advertise their own gigs. They don't want to know anything. They go, that's somebody else's job. And the problem with that, it's like saying, well, um, that's got nothing to do with me. Well, if you're in the band and you're really proud of it, you should be promoting it as well. I never had any tuition from promoting. I had to learn how to do everything myself. Uh, I had to set my own gigs up uh, with a lot of other people doing the similar thing, you know, sharing experience. And we'd, we'd arrange our own um, concerts. Started off in pubs to begin with, set up our own PA. I knew nothing about setting up a PA. Um, learn how to use a photocopier. Learn how to use a photocopier, how to enlarge posters. Um, things like uh, wallpaper paste. Uh, yes, fly posting is illegal, but in some ways you can get away with it if you do it in the correct way and let people know. Yeah, if you're going to have a poster, make sure the photography. Uh, is interesting, or the logo is interesting. What's the point of having bland posters? You're with this metal, metal core band, and then your poster looks like a jazz cafe. I've seen that happen, and they go, well, just spend some time looking at your imagery. What are you saying to people about your Battle of the Bands events and stuff? Battle of the Bands events, that's great. We'll put one band versus another band. If you're going to do that, why don't you put on Battle Royale? Uh, send the band to a small island, fight to the death, and then the winner of that uh, we'll celebrate that time by having a fantastic happy party with balloons. Brilliant, you're a winner. Uh, and then all the dead bodies there, that's the bands that never made it, their dreams smashed, you know, which is what reality TV does to an extent. Uh, and Battle of the Band contests. Um, admittedly, they're ways of getting your attention. I suppose everyone's got a way of doing that. Me media works on different ways. Venues do like to have battle of band contests, and uh, there's also a, sec a secondary contest, a who's got the biggest family contest. If you invite all your six-toed in-laws, uncles, aunts, uh, at every gig, your band has a greater chance of success, just in case it's not based on talent alone. What is success? I feel success now that I'm being able to be alive to make music, to be able to still write music. I love lyrics, I love writing music. As long as I have that in my life, I am successful. So, success is what somebody else deems it as. Yeah, I didn't really see success as a money pit. Yeah, that wouldn't make me mad. It'd be nice. Yeah, I can't deny that, but that's not why I do music. I'm never going to uh, music to make money.